In this video, we will cover why people buy art. Why do people buy art? Because if you don't understand this, you will simply not sell art as an artist. And as a collector, you also need to understand this. It's just a basic principle. My name is Dries Ketels, and I'm an artist myself. And this channel is all about providing you with the business side of, of the arts, that information that can lift up your career. So if you didn't subscribe yet, make sure you do. Anyway, let's dive into the video. And this video is going to cover, first of all, why people buy in general, so that we have a complete understanding and see which aspects of those are related to the arts. First reason why people buy stuff. First reason of the seven. First reason, because of an investment. People buy because they want to invest in a particular thing. You know, some people buy a home because they want to live in it. Some people buy it as an investment, an asset that will give them an income on a monthly basis and raise in value um, as time goes on. And this is also important for the arts. The arts is an investment place. Buying upcoming art for 400 euro today could as well be worth 600,000 10 years from now. That's a decade. That's an insane ROI. And so investment value is an insanely important aspect of why people buy art. Number two, reason number two. The second reason that people buy stuff is because of a variety of things. Sometimes people go to a particular shop because there's a lot of options. Yeah, people go to a large supermarket because they like to have all that stuff there and all those options. And those types of people will not go to a local small supermarket. Yes, in the arts, that variety doesn't really play that much of a game, especially not in the upcoming art world. Yeah, in, in that upcoming emerging art scene that is not really that much of a determining factor. You have on one hand, especially now with the with the coming of the internet, you have things like sachiart.com and stuff like that. There's a lot of variety there and that's definitely one of the reasons why some collectors will go there. And in the higher end, you also have some exceptions. You know, Sotheby's and, and, and Christie's, those are places where variety also plays a part. People go there to some extent because they have in one evening sale all of these masterpieces, all of these big branded artists coming on them. And that's that's just a, one of the reasons why they do that. By the way, variety, not only in art objects, you know, like Sotheby's, they deal in everything. You know, they have real estate that you can buy. They have jewelry. If you're, I don't know, if you want to buy a diploma or a degree for your daughter, you can also buy it there. So like there's a lot of things that you can buy there beyond the art. So that's an exception. But for us in the emerging scene, emerging collectors, emerging artists, this variety game is not really that important. A third reason that people buy stuff is because of the price. The pricing game is crucial. Not for the arts, by the way, but the pricing game is crucial in the world. Sometimes people buy something because it is cheaper than in another store. And, and, and that's kind of their only factor. For example, Amazon. People go and buy a book on Amazon. Why? Because it's cheaper than buying it in a local bookshop. And so these things work. Now, in the art world, the value of your art is determined by what people want to pay for it. And what people want to pay for it is not determined by the price that you choose. And so, so this pricing game doesn't really matter that much there. A good example to give you um, is, is the Larry Gagosian example. You know, Gagosian Gallery, um, there's this interview uh, where where one of the employees explains some of the sales processes there. And so the employee will, it's not even Larry himself, the employee will call a particular collector and will say, hey, Larry said that this piece would be very good for your collection. Now, what happens there is very interesting because 25% of the times, allegedly, according to that employee, 25% of the times, the buyer, the collector would say, okay, I take it. 
without seeing the work in person, without seeing just, just one picture on the internet and without knowing the price, without knowing the price. And so pricing is a very strange animal in the art world. And if you understand that the pricing game is something that people play in more of the viral marketing section of sales, where products are, are cheap, you know, fidget spinners or so whatever. And and that's that's then that, that's gonna be really um lifting your understanding of the art world up and, and, and therefore lifting your career up. Because when you understand this, you don't have to worry about the pricing anymore. Like a lot of upcoming artists, they actually think about pricing their art a lot. Like, how should I price it, Tris? How, what should I do? What should I take into account? The truth is that it probably doesn't matter as much as you think. And so this pricing game is something that only happens in exceptions of the art world. But in general, it's not that important. Now, another reason for people to buy stuff is out of convenience. For example, Amazon again. One of the reasons they buy that book is because it's one click away and then it's delivered to your doorstep. And that's it. That's all you need to do. And so that's a powerful factor for a lot of people to buy stuff. Now, in the arts, we don't want convenience. You know, in the arts, we're not selling on convenience. And so what you see online, with a lot now especially, like 50 years ago, I didn't, I didn't live then, but 50 years ago, I can assume that nobody in the arts was doing that. But now, on the, with the coming of the internet, you actually have people who try to do that. You actually have sometimes websites, online galleries, and, and sometimes even artists who create some kind of funnel to make their art commission thing very easy to do or, or some kind of funnel for, for buying their art or making it very easy for people to buy. That's not what you want. That's not what you want as an artist. You want to create, and then we go towards um, number five. You want to create personalized customer experiences, personalized, customized products. That's what you want to create. In the art world, we create a unique object that is being sold to a unique person with a unique experience. And so we want to customize and personalize that whole process. Sometimes the art might not be personalized, but the story behind it is, and the relationship that is built out is. And people in the arts, they want to, they want to have that experience. Buying art means connecting with an artist, means going to that studio, means getting access to particular places, social places that they would not get access to. You know, it's all about customized, personalized, unique experiences. And so you want to take that into account. The, the, the customization thing in the world is, is very important for the arts. You know, some people like to buy a bike and like to pay 300 euros more because they can choose the, the framing and the color and all of that stuff. You know, those types of people or those types of mindsets are the ones that are being used in the arts. So instead of going for convenience, you should go for customization and personalization. So we're coming to the end. The sixth reason why people buy stuff is because of quality. Because of quality. People will pay more for expensive shoes if they have a higher quality and they will last longer. Some people like to buy cheap shoes, the pricing game that we explained earlier. Some people like to buy expensive shoes because of the quality game. Now, this is also a game that is being played in the arts. You know, you can buy a painting that will last a century, two centuries, three centuries, that you can pass on to your um, siblings and, and, and family members and all of that stuff. Quality is a real big thing in the art world. And mm -hmm. instead of playing, for example, on price or convenience, you should, you should be playing on quality and understanding that quality matters. We want to conserve stuff, putting effort and priorities on conservation instead of convenience is going to lift up your sales dramatically and so um so take that into account quality is a real thing in the art world and the last one 
Um, the last reason why people buy stuff is for prestige. People don't buy a Porsche to go faster to their job. They hate their job. People buy a Porsche for prestige. And people in the art world buy stuff for prestige as well. You know, if you come into a room and there's a Mark Holtko, Marcus Holtkowitz hanging on the wall, you immediately recognize that it's a Mark Holtko. And you can say, and the people who owns it hears this, Wow, is that a real Mark Otko? And that is one of the reasons why they buy that. To hear that appreciation, to, re to hear that recognition of their status. They are the owner of a Mark Otko. And in those higher regions of the art world, the people there, they don't care about price, you know? All those people have shitloads of money. And the Porsche, they can buy any Porsche they want. But the Marcotko, they can't. There's only so many Marcotkos of that particular time that Marcotko made. There's only so many. You cannot buy, you, you cannot buy your way into that. There's more to it. You need connections. You need access to these paintings in order to be able to buy them. Or you're gonna pay like shitloads of premium prices, which even with like with the rare objects, you're not even gonna be able to do it like that. So, so these prestige things are real in the art world as well. It's one of the reasons why people buy art and probably perhaps even the most important one. And so with these seven reasons, you can understand that you should not put your focus and priorities on, for example, pricing. Put your focus where it should be. Conservation, quality, prestige investment values perhaps not actually as upcoming not even zero on variety i did that earlier on in my game i created i tried to have a a, a a variety of objects from realistic to abstract to to um to conceptual to really strange scientific stuff i figured out to paint how to paint with lightning from the sky as the only human being doing that and the only reason why i was trying to do that was to have a variety now was that the smartest thing i could do no probably not is it killing me is it destroying my thing no it's not a bad thing but it was probably not the best use of my time so don't go for variety at all um, and put your mind where it should be that said, make sure to subscribe if you want more information around the business side of the art so you can lift your career up as a collector or an artist or whatever. And see you next time. Double ciao, 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 ciao.